In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a handful of 200 watt portable folding solar panels that range from anywhere between $180 all the way up to about $629. And we'll be testing out their charging speeds and comparing their portability and their build quality to help you make the best decision when it comes time for you to pick up your next solar panel. Before we dive in, be sure to smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. And the panels that we're going to be looking at in this video are the Blue Eddy PV200, the All Powers SP035, the Dokio 200 watt panel, the Geniverse Solar Power 2, and the Foxtheon SP200. And I also created a little spreadsheet which makes it easier for you to compare the specs and the features of these solar panels. That also includes all of my test results from all the other solar panels that I've reviewed. And I'll link that down in the description below in case you wanna check that out. My charging test was done right about 11.30 a.m. on October 2nd, 2023. And the conditions were decent for this test, but they weren't the greatest due to the time of the year. And on average, they were a little bit slower than when I tested out a few of these panels earlier in the summer. So chances are if the conditions you test out these panels in are good then you might see better results than I do today and I'm going to be using a handful of different power stations to collect the watt readings and then averaging them together. We'll start off with the Blue Eddy PV200 which came in right around 164 watts which did make it the best performing of all the panels in the lineup and it produced 82% of the 200 watts that it claimed and at the time of making this video it can be purchased for right around $449 which brings the true cost per watt to right around $2.74, making it the second most affordable in the lineup just behind the Dokyo panel. If you care most about charging speeds and want to get as close to 200 watt as possible, then this is probably going to be the best panel for you to pick up in this lineup. The PV200 has a durable ETFE coating, which makes them great for those of you who plan on being more frequent chargers, and it weighed in at about 17.2 pounds and produces right around 9.53 watts per pound, making it the second most efficient in this category behind the All Power solar panel. So overall, it's a great choice if you're looking for something more lightweight as well. Blue Eddy's kickstand setup was very well executed too, and you do get some of the most impressive angle adjustment ranges of pretty much any panel here, so they definitely did excel in this category. Category as well. Next we'll check out the Foxion SP200 which is a lesser known brand but they did come in second place with the tested watt reading of about 141 and at the moment this panel is available for $399 which also brings the cost per watt down to $2.83 which is pretty close to what we saw with the Blue Eddy panel. So if you're looking to stay under 400 this is actually a pretty good way to go. The build quality on this panel is exceptional and we've got full ETFE lamination and the design is very similar to the Geniver panel that we'll be taking a look at in a couple minutes. It is the second heaviest panel here weighing in at about 19.4 pounds and it produces 7.27 watts per pound which is an average score for the panels in the group. Foxion also did great with their kickstand setup and this setup looks a lot like Blue Eddy's and you do get a ton of adjustment range and I'd probably give this panel a slight edge over Blue Eddy in terms of the ease of setup. Coming in very close behind to the Foxion panel was the Geniverse Solar Power 2 which produced about 140 watts during my testing. This panel is the most expensive in the lineup at about $629 at the time of making this video which brings the cost per watt tested to around $4.49 which is about $1.30 four cents more than the next most expensive panel in the lineup. The build quality is very impressive on this panel and it also has full ETFE lamination just like the Foxion panel and if durability is a concern this would definitely be one of the best options to go with. Weighing in at 22.3 pounds makes it the heaviest panel here and the lowest from a watt per pound perspective. So if weight savings is a concern, there are definitely some better options. Geniverse did well with their kickstand design and this was definitely one of the easiest to set up and you do get a pretty decent range of adjustment to the angle of the panels. This is the Dokio 200 watt panel, which was able to produce 123 watts in my test, which was only about 62% of what it claimed, but it is the most affordable panel here coming in at $188 bringing the cost per watt to $1.53, making it the cheapest on a cost per watt basis by about $1.21, followed by the Blue Eddy panel. If you're on a budget and want to spend less than $200 to get something relatively quick, then this is a decent way to go. The build quality is definitely lacking on this panel, and these are cheaper and less durable PET style panels, so they are definitely going to be less efficient and they're not going to hold up as well for long-term use. But if you only plan on using it casually from time to time, then that might not be a big deal. It weighs in at 17.5 pounds, which was relatively low from a watt per pound perspective, coming in at 7.03, but most of the weight was due to this external kickstand but if you ditch that, you do save about 4.4 pounds, making it the second lightest panel in the lineup. 
The Dokio 200 watt was definitely the least fun panel to set up, and I'm really not a huge fan of these external kickstands which came with the panel, and they didn't do the best job of supporting the panel, and it was the most difficult to get straight, and I also had to use the power station to support the panel in the center. Finally, we have the All Powers SP035, which did come in right behind the Dokio panel with 122 watts tested, which was about 61% of what was claimed, and at the moment this panel can be purchased for $385, which brings the cost per watt tested down to $3.15, which is the second most expensive behind the Geniverse panel. This is also a PET style panel, which isn't the greatest from a durability perspective, but it is incredibly lightweight coming in at 12.7 pounds, so it can produce 9.61 watts per pound, which is the most impressive of all the panels here by a long shot. If weight savings is a concern, this is absolutely a great panel to keep in mind. One downside to these kickstands is they don't have the greatest range of motion, so you are more limited in the adjustability here, but if you really want to try to squeeze as many watts as possible from these panels, you're going to have to use additional objects to help you angle the panel, but on the upside they are very quick and easy to deploy. To summarize, we can check out this little chart here which will tell you the name of the panel, the tested watts, the price, the cost per watts, how many watts it produced versus claimed as a percentage, the panel weight in pounds, and how many watts per pound of weight it produced during my testing. The Bluetti PV200 was the best performing panel from a tested watt perspective, and it also produced the closest to the 200 watts of all the panels claimed, and it also did well in numerous other categories. Dokio was the winner in terms of affordability, both in upfront cost at $188, and the cost per tested watt at $1.53, making it the best option for those of you on a tighter budget. All Powers produced the most lightweight panel in the group, and it was also the best from a watt per pound perspective, so this is probably the best option for those of you looking to save weight. Foxion and Geniverse didn't win any category, but they did do quite well in build quality, which is something to keep in mind if you plan on being rougher with the panels. But overall, of this group, if I had to choose one of these panels, I'd definitely choose the Bluetti PV200. But let me know which one you like the most down in the comments below. And if you have had the chance to test out any of these panels, it would be great to hear how many watts you're getting down in the comments as well. You can pick up these panels and support the channel using the affiliate links down in the description. And if you want to check out some other panels that I've done tests on, just like this one, I'll leave links to those down below as well.